This is section 4.2, part A, observational study versus experiment. A sample survey aims to gather information about a population without disturbing the population in the process. Sample surveys are one kind of observational study. Other observational studies watch the behavior of animals in the wild or the interaction between teacher and student in the classroom. In contrast to observational studies, experiments don't just observe individuals or ask them questions. They actively impose some treatment in order to measure the response. So an observational study observes individuals and measures variables of interest, but does not attempt to influence the responses. An experiment deliberately imposes some treatment on individuals to measure their responses. When our goal is to understand cause and effect, experiments are the only source of fully convincing data. A lurking variable is a variable not among the experimental or response variables in a study, but that may influence the response variable. A study was done of women to see if taking hormones after menopause reduces their risk of heart attack. This study has two lurking variables from the observational studies, number of doctor visits per year and age. The women who chose to take hormones visited their doctors more often than the women who did not take hormones. Did the women in the hormon uh, hormone group have fewer heart attacks because they got better health care or because of the hormones they were taking? We can't be sure. A situation like the hormone study, in which the effects of two variables on a response variable cannot be separated from each other, is called confounding. Some people call a lurking variable the results in confounding, like the number of doctor visits per year in this case, a confounding variable. So when you go to take your AP exam, if you are asked to identify a possible confounding variable in a given setting, you are expected to explain how the variable you chose is first associated with the expl explanatory variable, and then you need to explain the effects on the response variable. You need to be cautious. Observational studies of the effect of one variable on another often fail because of confounding between the explanatory variable and one or more lurking variables. Well-designed experiments take steps to prevent confounding. The moral of the story is simple. Beware of the lurking variable. An experiment is a statistical study in which we actually do something which we call a treatment to people, animals, or objects, and those are your experimental units, to observe the response. Here is the basic vocabulary of experiments. A specific condition applied to the individuals in an experiment is called a treatment. In an experiment has, if an experiment has several explanatory variables, a treatment is a combination of specific values of these variables. The experimental units are the smallest collection of individuals to which treatments are applied. When the units are human beings, they are often called subjects. Researchers at the University of North Carolina were concerned about the increasing dropout rate in the school's high school, especially for low-income students. Surveys of recent dropouts revealed that many of these students had started to lose interest during middle school. They said that they saw little connection between what they were studying in school and their future plans. To change this perception, researchers de developed a program called Career Start. The big idea of the program is that teachers show students how the topics they learn get used in specific careers. To test the effectiveness of Career Start, the researchers recruited 14 middle schools to participate in an experiment. Seven of the schools chosen at random used Career Start along with the district standard curriculum. The other seven schools just followed the standard curriculum. Researchers followed both groups of students for several years, collecting data on students' attendance, behavior, standardized test scores, level engagement in school, and whether the students graduated from high school. The results they found were students at schools that used Career Start generally had better attendance and fewer discipline problems. They earned higher test scores, reported greater engagement in their classes, and were more likely to graduate. So we need to identify the experimental units 
explanatory and response variables, and the treatments in the career start experiment. So let's identify the experimental units first. The experimental units are the 14 middle schools in North Carolina. The explanatory variable is whether or not the school used the career start program with their students. The experiments compared two different treatments. The first treatment was the standard middle school curriculum, and the second treatment was a standard curriculum plus career start. Several different response variables were measured, including test scores, attendance, behavior, student engagement, and graduation rates. The previous example illustrates the big advantage of experiment over observational study. Experiments can give good evidence for causation. Sometimes the explanatory variables in one experiment are called factors. Many experiments, experiments study the joint effects of several factors. In such an experiment, each treatment is formed by combining a specific value, often called a level, of each of the factors. What are the effects of repeated exposure to an advertising message? The answer may depend on both the length of the ad and how often it is repeated. An experiment investigated this question using undergraduate students as subjects. All subjects viewed a 40-minute television program that included ads for a digital camera. Some subjects saw a 30-second commercial, others a 90-second version. The same commercial was shown either one, three, or five times during the program. After viewing, all subjects answered questions about their recall of the ad, their attitude towards the camera, and their intentions to purchase it. So for this advertising study, identify the explanatory and the response variables. So the experiment has two explanatory variables or factors. The first one is the length of the commercial, and the second one is the number of repetitions that it was played. The response variables include measures of the student's recall of the ad, their attitude about the digital camera, and whether they intend to purchase the camera. List all of the treatments. So there were two different lengths of the commercial, either 30 second or 90 second, and there are three different number of repetitions, either one, two, one, three, or five. So there are six different combinations consisting of one level of each factor. The first one is 30 seconds and one time. Then we have 30 seconds three times, 30 seconds five times. Then we have 90 seconds played one time, 90 seconds played three times, or 90 seconds played five times. Does reducing screen time brightness increase battery life in laptop computers? To find out, researchers obtained 30 new laptops of the same brand. They chose 15 of the computers at random and adjusted their screens to brightness settings. The other 15 laptop screens were left to the default setting, moderately bright. Researchers then measured how long each machine's battery lasted. What is the observational, was this an observational study or an experiment? Justify your answer. Since the researchers changed something about half of the people in the study or half the computers in the study, this would be an experimental study. Does eating dinner with your family improve students' academic performance? According to an ABC News article, teenagers who eat with their families at least five times a week are more likely to get better grades in school. The following was based on a sample survey conducted by researchers at Columbia University. Was this an observational study or an experimental? Since this was just a survey that was conducted, they didn't assign whether families had dinner together or not. This would be an observational study. What are the experimental or the explanatory and response variables in this survey? So the explanatory variables is the number of meals per week eaten with their family, and the response variable is probably that their GPA that they're looking at since they're looking at the student's grades. Explain clearly why such a study cannot establish a cause and effect relationship. Suggest a lurking variable that may be confounded with whether families eat dinner together. 
This is an observational study, and, they may well, and there may well be a lurking variable that actually influences that response variable. For instance, a family that eats more meals together may also be a family where parents show more interest in their students' education, and therefore they would help them with their work, help them study, and that would help the students do better in school.